Now go ahead. Oh, okay, awesome. So we are recording now. So I just, I really wanted to uh, chat with you a little bit and um, I wanted to get a little bit more of your story and where, uh, how you came to theater and Brian, why you've stayed so long, what you plan for. Yeah, um, I've been in Brian all my life. I was born in Montpelier, raised in Brian. Um, my parents came from South Texas. Oh, wow. Um, okay. some point that they came up here, my dad kind of, um, I don't want to say raised because he was raised in Texas, but they moved to Fort Wayne. Um, when my dad was quite young in his teens, my mother had moved to Paulding quite young. So they went to church together in Fort Wayne, met, married, fell in love, fell in love, got married. Um, my dad worked for a company in Archibald and he drove from Fort, or I drove from Fort Wayne to Archibald for work. Eventually they ended up in Bryan. So I've been here forever. My parents are still here. Um, and they liked Bryan because it was a small community. It seemed nice. And they wanted a nice community to raise their kids. I have an older sister and a younger brother. So the three of us were all raised here. My sister still lives here. My brother um, on the other side of Ohio. But he comes home when he's able. But um, I stuck around Brian. It wasn't always my intention. I have a photography and I wanted to do photography in a bigger city or even do sports photography for like NASCAR. Um, so I've done some travel and sports photography over the years, but I actually have been working for a local insurance agency um, for the past seven years and been in insurance for 20 years. So my plans to be a photographer didn't quite work out, but I still do it on the side and when I can. Um, I got into theater just a few years ago. I mean, I had been in theater and in performing arts when I was in high school, performed in our school orchestra, was involved with that since I was the fourth grader till graduation, still dabble in that a little bit now. Um, but theater came along after I married my husband, Jeremy Scott, and he was involved and I had always loved theater. So with him being involved, that was kind of the catalyst for me to, to get re-involved. And so he was the reason that I um, became involved with the theater. So it's just kind of been that way for the past five years that we've been together. Um, I had thought about it years um, prior to us getting married, you know, getting involved in theater, but my um, duties as working mom and having three small kids at home just kind of really didn't have, you know, the place for it in my life. So now that my girls are teenagers and need me a little bit less, you know, I have some time on my hands that I can perform and do things that are near and dear to my heart. The theater um, has grown into being one of those. Um, the community, Brian is amazing as far as <clears throat> um, nurturing and being very supportive of the performing arts, not just with our local theater, local theaters, as far as the high school productions, you know, their high school play, their high school spring musical. Um, the community has always been very supportive in. The community is also right now building an outdoor amphitheater for outdoor um, performances and such in the park, which is fantastic. So, and we've got, you know, our Bryan City Band, they play in the summer um, on the square. The summer was a little different, um, but Bryan's always been very, very supportive of the, of the performing arts and the theater is no exception. So I'm glad to be a part of it. What's your favorite show that you've done? Um, probably the most recent one I did last year was 65 Roses, and it was written by Cecil Goldsmith, who was a big part of the theater years and years and years ago before he passed on. His family is still involved, um, but he had wrote it based on a true story of his life with his children battling cystic fibrosis, so it was an honor to be in that production um, written by, you know, local thespian um, himself. Um, 
And then probably Red Velvet Cake Wars, which was directed by my husband. It was the very first play that we got to um, be to or corroborate in. And it was fun. It was an experience to be directed by him. Um, yeah, just because I was director's wife, I didn't get any special attention or any special treatment. He yelled at me once or twice, which was fine. But um, probably those two those two plays, 65 Roses and Red Velvet Cake Wars. It was a comedy, worked with some very, very wonderful women um, who just took me under their wing and still take me under their wing and mm -hmm. teach me the theater ropes. Yeah, Denver told me about 65 Roses because he was, he played mm -hmm. Cecil Goldsmith, right? He, played he did play Cecil's part, yeah, but I was Denver's wife actually in that one. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. That's so cool. I I've been I've been hearing all of these wonderful stories about the arts in Brian and how um, people are just so excited to um, mm -hmm. contribute to the arts in any way. I just I, I think that's so such a wonderful thing. I do you have is there a place other than the theater in Brian that you think is is special or or people should know about? Place in Brian. Um outside for people outside of our community yeah um our parks definitely the parks and recreation department have definitely put in a lot of time and energy in the city or the residents of the city have definitely put in a lot of time and energy in our parks um inside our park the imagination station is a wooden park structure that the community actually built um, i believe it was 25 years ago i'm trying to think if that was correct or not um, but yeah, so the community built, we took a week and put together this amazing wood park structure um, with, uh, there was a balance beam and tires and swings and a teepee. And so the community has definitely, we pulled together back then and built that park. And it was an amazing project to be a part of. I was young. A lot of the other kids were young too, but you know, there were jobs for everybody from filling the sandboxes to hauling, you know, with a bucket of sand to, you know, the adults playing with the power tools. So the imagination station is definitely um, a gem of Brian mm -hmm. that we all uh, built. Um, Spangler candy. And I'm sure everybody knows what Spangler candy is and what they're known for, but they do tours. So, you know, visitors that come into town, they like to try to um, advertise the trolley tour that takes place within the factory. And it's cool. I've been on it myself a few times. So it's actually really neat. It's got a really rich history. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Just I think a lot of our little parks even have their own little spots mm -hmm. that are nice to grab a picnic or bring a lunch to and just sit and be. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't just our parks. Yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. And the town has really worked hard on keeping them developed and mm -hmm. just beautiful they beautiful really parks I've, I've been I, i've had i was able to go through several parks when i was there and they really are mm -hmm. i mean just absolutely lovely little places yeah. um, do you have um do you have a favorite memory growing up in brian our jubilee the annual jubilee that we have downtown around the square um it's usually a week long from like Tuesday to Saturday and then like a day in the park where we have our fireworks in June. Um, growing up, it was always the thing to do for the start of the summer. Mm -hmm. So there was rides and games and it's just a, this little carnival, but you know, you met your friends and you just walk around the Jubilee for hours, you know, the night um, snacking on junk food and, you know, just whoever, but probably the Jubilee. My parents would take us and we would go on Sunday for the fireworks and lay on a blanket, sit on the blanket, you know, have a little picnic or whatever and, and see that. So probably our annual Jubilee is probably my favorite memory growing up. It's just, it'll never be the way that it was. And of course, everything is that same way, but mm -hmm. um, for me, it's our Jubilee. And we, you still do that? Does that still happen every year? It, it does. It's it's gotten a little bit smaller over the past just couple of years. Um, I think it's been like a three day thing, um, but this year, of course, the kibosh was put on it. But hopefully next year they can bring it back. But yeah, so the jubilee will still come. Um, local vendors, snack foods. Mm -hmm. So I don't meet my friends up there so much, but I know my children do. So it's nice to you know just kind of go 
passed down um, that they take over that. But it's fun. It's fun to go see and just kind of be and remember how we were when we were young and getting a Pence's lemonade and walking around. Yeah. So. That's wonderful. Oh, that's so, that sounds so nice. I, I wish it I, is I, neat. I hope that I can, I can see that someday. And I just, I wonder if you have any, any thoughts about how, where Brian's headed. I think Brian is still headed in a good direction because like I, like I said in our previous conversation, you know, they still have the product or, you know, the project developers that are still trying to bring corporations to Brian, jobs to Brian. So I think we're still headed in a good direction. Um, growing up and seeing the things that have changed over the few years or over the past, what is it, 40 something. So over the past 40 some years, um, Brian's grown mm -hmm. as far as some of the developments they brought in. Um, sad to see some of the smaller schools that are torn down, but you know, we have a, a nice new high school, middle school combined on the, on the edge of town, which is fantastic. Um, I don't know what's in store for Brian in the future. I just know that they're, you know, our project developers are still always looking for businesses and industries to come in and take over the empty storefronts. And some of those that have purchased the storefronts and do small businesses, pop-up stores, they're great. They really, really are. Um, it's hard to compete with the bigger box stores and Amazon. Um, so some of the smaller stores don't survive, but, you know, a lot of us, we do try to pitch in and support, but you know, mm -hmm. one you know, single a person can only do, you know, so much as far as buying product and, yeah. you know, especially if they're specialty items, you know, it's only something you don't keep replenishing, but um, it's hard for, I know, the small ones to com to compete with Amazon. And, and that's unfortunate, you know, thinking of the stores that were here that have left because of, you know, the Amazon curse, it's really sad, yeah. but I know that there are some that still do try to keep it um, feasible mm -hmm. and economically sound for people to purchase products that they could still get on Amazon, but hey, buy it here, even though it's a dollar, two, three more or something. So um, I hope Brian's headed in the right direction, yeah. I tell, I guess. Mm -hmm. And especially right now with all the COVID stuff, it's hard for smaller businesses to stay open or, you know, cut their services or you know, they just, they try. So we try to support them as much as we can. Yeah. And there's, there's these studies that are starting to come out, um, mostly directly related to COVID that people are leaving cities because the, they're, these corporations are figuring out that these people don't ever have to go back to office work. They can all work remotely. They can do their jobs mm -hmm. um, from home. And so there's a lot of people leaving cities and coming to smaller communities because they can work remotely. Do you think that Brian, would be receptive to being a community for a bunch of city fleers. <laughs> I do think so. Yeah. Yep. Cause our school system is fantastic. You know, we have quite a few other extracurriculars that some of the bigger schools don't have, um, or even as a smaller size where kids can have more of an opportunity on a team in a club. So yeah, I, I do definitely see, Brian could be one of those that like, it's almost like the snowbird effect, you know, you leave the, the colder states to go and vacation in the warmer ones, you leave the bigger cities so you can stay home and work from home and have a smaller community to raise your children. But it's a great community to raise our, to raise kids and I'm raising my own three and mm -hmm. Jeremy's two live in the next town. So, you know, we're all, we're all raising our kids in these small communities. So my my company right now we are all working remotely from home and i don't think i could i don't know if my job could do it 100 percent from home because i do a lot of customer interaction so those clients that want to come into the office and meet face to face with their agent of course right now we're not able to but you know i have a lot of people sitting at my desk prior to covid so um i don't think i could be one of those people who just 100 percent fully work from home just because I, I do interact with my clients and, and like to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. I couldn't, I don't think I could ever work from home full time just for my own. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's a really interesting prospect and in just how, how do you position the town in such a way that people want to want to come um, and want to stay. So 
Yeah. Yeah, I think we just, everybody that's in the community just really tries to make it homey and inviting and for people to stay. I, I came back, like after college, I was gone for a little bit and then came back and, you know, now raising my family. So it's just the clubs that we have, the service organizations always make it very inviting. You know, the, the other mothers that you meet from the, you know, your kids being on the recreation soccer team, you know, you become friends with and just kind of have that, that tribe to raise the village because of course it takes one. Mm -hmm. um, so Brian's always made it very comforting in a very, just a homey environment. Um, we're definitely a lot more diverse than what we used to be when I was growing up, which is nice to see. Yeah. Um, so a lot of different other families of color have moved in and stayed. So yeah. it's just, it is, it's a wonderful, wonderful community and all the communities around here, you know, are all inviting and, and friendly and warm. So there isn't one over the other, but with Brian be just being bigger than the other ones, it's just in our beautiful parks. Um, so just the things that we have to offer, I think is, is very warm and inviting and keep people here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing too. You mentioned having more diversity and the diversity in, in Brian is growing. And I think that's, that's part of the question of does Brian welcome newcomers? Is it, it is Brian comfortable with becoming a more diverse community? You mm -hmm. know? So, and it sounds like you're saying that, that, that it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. They have. Yeah. Yeah. They've always been very warm and like I said, warm and inviting. I'll, I'll use that term again. Um, in high school, there wasn't very many of us families of color that were there. So I've experienced a little bit of seeing the other side of things. Yeah. Yeah. But not too much, not too much. Brian was always pretty much, you know, got my back. So, um, but other families moving in and staying and, you know, there's not, there's not been any issues. It's awesome. That's <laughs> good. <Yeah. laughs> That's wonderful. Um, yeah. Do you have any, anything else that you would like to say or talk about? Not uh, no, you're good. I no, I, I love Brian. I love being from here. Um, if yeah. I didn't, and it wasn't a safe community or a good community with, you know, a rich history and just the ease of, of everyday living. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids are outside playing, they're in the community, you know, um, like the rec softball team and rec soccer teams and things like that. So, you know, they're always a part of something and definitely try to make them want to be a part of stuff just because this is their community. You know, they are future generations to come. And, you know, if we start everybody moving out and leaving, unfortunately, we become a ghost town and I don't do think Brian would ever be that way, but. Do you think your daughters will stay or go to college and come back? Um, I think one of, out of the three will. One out of three. I've got one out of three bad. I've got one who uh, wants to be an animator for a company or, you know, like a Disney or Pixar, you know, that Aww. sort of um, uh, industry. But um, I tell her, I said, if you want to go do that, then go. You know, there's not that, that's not going to be here for you, but, um, got a one who wants to do finance or, you know, accounting. So, you know, it would be a very good place for her to raise her family. Not sure about my other one, my, my middle one, but whatever she does, I know she'll be great at, but, um, not that I don't want them to come back, but I want them to experience. Yeah. So, you know, I, traveled for just a little bit after, um, after I worked a few years after, after high school, did a little bit of traveling. So I'd like my kids to have that opportunity as well. So, but if they end up here, I, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, Brian's a great community. I know my daughter loves the house that we currently live in and she has a pet buried in the backyard and doesn't want to leave that pet. So if I have to sell her my house, when <laughs> I'm going to move out of it, she can have it. Go. That's a good deal. Yeah, but I appreciate you asking me to share my story. It's not a big one, but I love Brian. I mean, it's, it's my heart and soul, just where I've always been.
Yeah. I, and I, I, I love, I love that. And I, I love talking to people from this community and learning more about it. Um, I feel like the more people I talk to the the, I learn these just little bits of kind of the fabric of, of the way the community views itself. And I think that's just really cool.